Hey guys, in this video I will share with you some hacks and break out a few advanced strategies for using the Facebook pixel to get optimal performance for your Facebook ad campaigns. Let's make this real simple. Think of the Facebook pixel as a piece of code that enables communication between your website and Facebook. Like in the real world, when you are able to increase communication in an organization, we see a direct impact to performance of the teams. Makes sense, right? In the same vein, when we increase communication between the Facebook pixel and your website, we can increase performance of your campaigns. So how do we do this? Well, there are a few ways. The first thing is you want to evaluate your Facebook pixel mapping strategy. So what is your mapping strategy? Now, assuming that you've pixeled out your website, you obviously need your base pixel on your global header. Maybe you're using Google Tag Manager, however you're doing it, that should be on every single page. Then you have your view content on specific pages that are important. So for this example, I'm gonna show you a resort. I can't tell you the name of the brand, but this is a resort and what we were trying to do is drive bookings for this business. The resort was a little bit different because instead of renting rooms in a hotel, you could actually rent a home. Again, I can't tell you who exactly this customer is, but just for this example, let's just use this. Now, when you went to the website, their strategy was pretty much have the base pixel across the website, all the pages, and their view content standard event for Facebook on the different product pages. Now, when you first went to the website, there was a search bar that you can type in the dates and you can press a search button and it would take you to a search. Now we had that tagged uh, with a search and depending on what home you landed on, we would have the view content pixel. So we were seeing uh, each step of the funnel. When you added, uh, sometimes there are discounts on the homes, so people would have to add the home to the, the home or the, the, the booking to the cart in order for them to see the full price. When they would get here, sometimes they would also go to initiate checkout right away uh, because there were some additional terms and conditions. Now, in this specific situation, what we were noticing is when we were optimizing the Facebook pixel for purchase, or in this case, an online booking where someone gave their credit card, we weren't having a lot of success. Actually, most of the times we were spending under budget by like 50%, which is crazy. So. One of the things that we did to adjust this was that we started to realize that when somebody was making this purchase decision, they were booking a, a resort style a home, there was probably more people involved in the purchase decision and the same day that they went to our website was not necessarily the same day that they were ready to book. So what was happening was these people were going to the website, they were gathering information, they were going all the way to the last step to get all the details on the pricing and the terms, and then they weren't booking. Well, at least on Facebook, because they were leaving the website and then going and talking to their peers, their partner, their spouse, the rest of the people that were involved in the purchase decision, and they were also probably comparing different options. So in this situation, it, wasn't, it was actually not optimal because there was such a huge drop off between initiated checkout to purchase for us to optimize for purchases because it would make it very hard for Facebook to find these people as we didn't have enough of these purchases happening online. So what we actually did is we ended up optimizing for initiate checkout, which was the standard event before that we were getting a lot of volume off and there was a big drop off in between. And what ended up happening is that the, the website traffic exploded, but we also increased um, the bookings that we saw in other channels as well as Facebook as well. One thing that you might've not actually known is that when you launch a brand new website, or once you put the pixel on the website and it starts collecting data, you need to get 500 pixel fires for whichever event for Facebook to be able to optimize at its full capability. This does not also include the 25 to 50 conversions that you need to get at an ad set level once you create your campaign. Now, another strategy you can use if you have a brand new website is to optimize your initial Facebook campaigns for website traffic so that you can start getting pixel fires on your website before optimizing for conversions. Now, depending on your budget, you might wanna run your campaigns for at least one to two weeks to get enough volume on your website so that the Facebook pixel can start optimizing at the most effective levels towards that optimization. Now, another thing I wanna share with you is using the right conversion optimization window settings. Depending on your purchase, you might have a seven day click and a seven day view through, which means Facebook is gonna optimize for people that are most likely to 
click on your ad and make a conversion within a seven day period. Now, depending on the product or service, you might wanna change this. If you have products that on the same day that someone clicks on your ad, they also tend to purchase, maybe it's like a low cost item, you can optimize for a one day click window. If you have a purchase like this one, which potentially takes a little bit longer period of time because people are in their evaluation stage of their journey and they have to talk to other people, then you wanna do a seven day window. Now an average, based on Facebook, it can take as many as 57 to 60 digital touch points before this consumer journey for someone uh, in the travel, looking for bookings for travel, potentially has to take before actually getting to, to their actual decision. So a seven day window is what you wanna do for something in this kind of, of buyer journey. Um, but again, depending on what it is, it, you might actually wanna do a one day click conversion. Now, very important to note here, if you do a one day conversion window optimization at your ad set level when you're setting your, up your campaign in Facebook, that means that you're gonna have to get 50 conversions for the pixel to complete its learning phase. Now, if you don't know what the learning phase is, every time you launch a new ad set, the Facebook pixel has to go through a phase for it to understand who's the optimal people to show your ads to, to deliver your impressions to. It takes about 50 conversions to complete this phase. Before Facebook used to claim it was anywhere between as low as 25 conversions to 50 if you were doing a one day click. Now I've seen that sometimes it's taken me uh, more than 50 conversions to complete the learning phase. And other times it's been a little bit less by like five or seven conversions that it's gotten there. Um, what it means is that now the pixel can optimize to its full potential. Very important to note during this learning phase, do not make changes. If you make major changes, it will reset the learning phase and the next day you're gonna have volatile delivery and you're gonna have a lot of inconsistency day over day for conversions. Now, what is a major change? If you pause the ad set and then activate it again. If you change the budget, let's say you double it, it's gonna reset the learning phase. If you change your bid, let's say you're doing manual bidding, anything you change, if you change your ads, it's gonna reset the learning phase. So ideally what you wanna do is set things up in a way where you don't really have to make a lot of changes after it's set up so that Facebook could do what it needs to do. Now, if you do have an emergency and you need, do need to pause, then you do what you gotta do. Um, just understand the trade-off of making those changes to having that consistent delivery. Another thing that's gonna happen is your cost per conversion is gonna increase because of this destabilization of the pixel because you made a major change during the learning phase. A rule of thumb is that if you need to make a major significant change, it's actually better to just build a brand new ad set. Just duplicate the existing one and create a new one to launch for the next day or whenever you need to launch it again instead of reusing the old ad set because it's gonna have that previous performance data. Now, if you're doing a one day optimization for the pixel, what's gonna happen is the day the next day, your ad set is gonna try to match the performance of the previous day. So if today you're not doing too well, guess what, tomorrow you're gonna have less delivery. So when you're making these major changes or having issues with your ad set delivery, it's just better a lot of times to just rebuild a new one for the next day so you can start with zero historical performance, you can start from scratch, and then your campaigns are gonna run a lot more optimally. Now, if you're having issues with delivery, another thing you can do is maybe build larger audiences or just change some of your settings. For example, the minimum audience size you wanna build at an ad set level is 200K people. And maybe right now you're running a lookalike 1% audience. Maybe you can push your audience to a 2% lookalike audience. There's a trade-off. You're gonna get a larger volume, but now you're gonna have a little bit less relevancy because the 1% is the one that matches the greatest amount of the characteristics of the sales or email list that you uploaded. But you can offset that by potentially lowering your bid, what you're willing to pay. Also, you can maybe go from, if you're using a daily budget, you can go to a lifetime budget and let Facebook optimize your dollars over time. Or if you have multiple ad sets, and what you're doing is you're saying, okay, this audience is doing good, let me shift money here. Then if this one's doing good, let me shift money there. There's actually an option within Facebook that you can allow your budget to be optimized within the campaign by itself so it doesn't reset your learning phase and it allows your campaign to run more optimally. Just because you have the Facebook pixel on your website will not mean your campaigns will get good results. With the Facebook pixel mapping strategy and the right ad set settings, you will increase exponentially the communication between Facebook 
and your website and the return on your advertising dollars. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you found the information useful and if you want to see more videos like this one. Until the next time, peace.